Dear viewers, greetings. In this video, we are going to see about fluorescent spectroscopy. This video covers the following topics. First, an introduction about fluorescent spectroscopy, followed by principle of fluorescent spectroscopy, instrumentation of fluorescent spectroscopy, working procedure of fluorescent spectroscopy, steps of fluorescent spectroscopy, applications of fluorescent spectroscopy, advantages of fluorescent spectroscopy and limitations of fluorescent spectroscopy. Fluorescent spectroscopy. Fluorescent spectroscopy is an analytical technique used to measure the fluorescence emitted by a substance when it absorbs UV light or visible light or electromagnetic radiation. Fluorescent spectroscopy involves the excitation of electrons in a molecule to higher energy states followed by the emission of fluorescent light as they return to their ground state. The emitted fluorescence can be used to identify and quantify the presence of specific molecules in a sample. Fluorescent spectroscopy has wide application in chemical and biological sciences as it can be used to analyze a biological sample by studying its interactions with fluorescent probe molecules. Principle of fluorescent spectroscopy. The fluorescent spectroscopy is based on the principle of molecular excitation and emission of light. When a substance absorbs light, typically in the ultraviolet or visible region, its electrons are elevated to a higher energy state. The excited state is unstable and the electrons tend to return to their original low energy state. As the electrons drop back to their ground state, they release the excess energy in the form of light, a process called fluorescence. The emitted light generally has a longer wavelength or lower energy than the absorbed light due to the energy losses during the process. By analyzing the wavelength and intensity of the emitted light, fluorescent spectroscopy can provide valuable information about the molecular environment, concentration and dynamics of the fluorescent molecules. Instrumentation of fluorescent spectroscopy the instrumentation of fluorescent spectroscopy contains six major parts. They are light source, excitation monochromator, sample holder, emission monochromator, detector, and data output. Light source. A light source, usually a xenon or mercury arc lamp, LED or laser, provides the excitation energy. The light source emits photons of specific wavelengths that are absorbed by the sample to induce fluorescence. Excitation monochromator. Excitation monochromator is a monochromator which selects the specific wavelengths from the light source for excitation, ensuring only the desired wavelength reaches the sample. Sample folder. The sample is usually placed in a quartz cuvette that allows light to pass through without absorption. Fluorescent samples can be measured on slides or in multi-well plates. Emission monochromator. The emitted fluorescence from the sample is passed through another monochromator called emission monochromator that selects a specific emission wavelengths. Detectors. A sensitive photodetectors such as photomultiplier tube or charge coupled device detects and measures the intensity of the emitted light. Finally, data output. The detected fluorescence intensity is then processed and displayed as a fluorescence spectrum showing emission in intensity versus wavelength. Working mechanism of fluorescence spectroscopy. First light source. The light source provides the initial light used to, to excite the sample. In fluorescence spectroscopy, this is usually a specific wavelength of light often produced by a xenon or LED lamp. Next, the excitation monochromator. Uh, this device selects the wavelength of light from the light source that is used to, to excite the sample. It works by allowing only light of a specific wavelength or a range of wavelength to pass through. Polarized filter. This filter is used to, to polarize the exciting light before it hits the sample. Polarization ensures that the light wave vibrate in a specific direction, which is often useful for fluorescence 
anisotropy experiment where the orientation of molecule is important next the sample this is the material being studied this the light from the source excites the sample causing it to emit light to their different wavelength next emitted light after excitation the sample emits the fluorescent light typically at a longer wavelength than the excitation light polarizer analyzer the emitted light passes through another polarizer which can filter the emitted light based on its polarization this is useful for analyzing the anisotropy or polarization properties of the emitted light next emission monochromator this device selects the wavelength of the emitted light that is detected since fluorescence occurs at a different wavelength than excitation this monochromator ensures that only the emitted light of interest is measured next the photomultiplier uh, this is a highly sensitive detector used to, to measure the intensity of the emitted fluorescence light the photomultiplier tube amplifies the signal making it easier to 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 detect lower levels of fluorescence finally the fluorescence signal the final output which is the intensity of the fluorescence emitted by the sample this is recorded and analyzed to derive information about the sample's properties steps in fluorescence spectroscopy there are six steps in fluorescence spectroscopy the first step is sample preparation the first step is to prepare the sample containing the fluorescent molecules or fluorophore the sample should be properly dissolved or suspended in a solvent that does not interfere with fluorescent measurements it is essential to ensure that the fluorophore concentration is within the desirable range to avoid issues like quenching or self absorption the second step is excitation the sample is exposed to a beam of light usually ultraviolet or visible light at a specific wavelength that corresponds to the absorption maximum of the fluorophore this light excites the electrons in the fluorophore molecule causing them to move from their ground state to a higher level state or excited state the third step is relaxation and emission once in the excited state the molecules quickly lose some energy through non radiative process that is uh, vibrations then the excited electrons drop back down to their lower energy level releasing their remaining energy in the form of fluorescence this emitted light has a longer wavelength than the absorbed light the fourth step is detection of emission the emitted fluorescence is captured using a detector typically a photomultiplier tube or a photodiode which measures the intensity of the fluorescence the detector is set an angle usually 90 degree to minimize interference from the excitation light the fifth step is spectral analysis the wavelength and intensity of the emitted light are analyzed the emission spectrum is generated by scanning across a range of wavelengths and measuring the fluorescence intensity at at each point this data provides insights into the concentration environment and dynamics of the fluorophore molecules the sixth and final step is data interpretation the fluorescence data is processed and interpreted based on the fluorescence intensity emission wavelength and spectral shifts this analysis can reveal important details about the sample such as molecular binding structural changes and interactions with other molecules applications of fluorescence spectroscopy fluorescence spectroscopy is widely used in many fields due to its sensitivity specificity and ability to provide detailed molecular information in protein and nucleic acid studies fluorescence microscopy is used to, to study the protein folding binding interactions and conformational changes it can also be used to, to analyze nucleic acids and their interactions with other molecules in fluorescence labeling fluorescent dyes or probes are attached to the biomolecules to track cellular processes protein localization and enzyme activity in immunoassays fluorescent based assays such as enzyme linked immunosorbent assay or elisa and fluorescence in situ 
hybridization technique or fish technique are used for the detection of specific antigen antibodies or nucleic acids in cancer diagnosis fluorescence imaging is used for detecting cancer cells and certain fluorescent dyes are used to target and visualize tumors in medical imaging in pollutant detection fluorescent spectroscopy is used to detect trace amounts of pollutants such as polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons heavy metals and organic compounds in water and air in water quality analysis fluorescence can be used to monitor dissolved organic matter and other contaminants in water sample in drug binding sites fluorescence microscopy is utilized to study the binding interactions between drugs and their target molecules and providing insights into the drug efficacy and mechanism of action in high throughput screening fluorescence based technique are employed in pharmaceutical industries for rapid screening of drug candidates in cell biology fluorescent microscopy relies on fluorescent labels to visualize cellular structures organelles and biological processes at high resolution techniques like confocal microscopy and total internal reflection fluorescence or tar microscopy are based on fluorescence principles molecular identification in molecular identification fluorescence spectroscopy can identify molecules based on their unique fluorescence emission spectra in quantitative analysis fluorescence spectroscopy technique is used to quantify the concentration of fluorescent compounds in complex mixtures in food quality control fluorescence spectroscopy can detect food contaminants adulterants and spoilage indicators it is also used to measure antioxidant levels in food products in crop monitoring fluorescence imaging is used to assess the health and stress level of crops helping in precision agriculture advantages of fluorescence spectroscopy high sensitivity fluorescence spectroscopy is incredibly sensitive allowing for the detection of very low concentration of analytes often in a nanomolar or picromolar range making it ideal for trace analysis high specificity fluorescent molecules or fluorophores have unique excitation and emission spectra enabling highly specific detection of individual components in complex mixtures fast and real time monitoring the technique allows for rapid measurements and can track dynamic process in real time such as molecular interactions conformational changes and environmental shifts non destructive fluorescent measurements are typically non invasive and non destructive preserving the integrity of biological or chemical samples during analysis multiplex capabilities multiple fluorophores with different emission spectra can be used simultaneously allowing for the detection and analysis of multiple targets within a single sample applicable to a wide range of fields fluorescence spectroscopy is widely used in diverse fields such as biochemistry microbiology environmental science material science medicine and pharmacology it can be applied to study molecular interactions environmental contaminants cellular processes and much more ability to study molecular interactions fluorescence spectroscopy is an excellent tool for studying the molecular interactions such as protein ligand binding protein protein interactions and conformational changes through techniques like fluorescent resonance energy transfer or fret limitations of fluorescence spectroscopy there are five limitations first limitation is photo bleaching fluorophores can undergo photo bleaching where they lose their ability to fluoresce after prolonged exposure to the excitation light this limits its duration of experiments and they emit the ability to collect long term data the second limitation is quenching the presence of certain substances can lead to fluorescence quenching reducing the emitted light intensity and potentially affecting the quantitative measurements the third limitation is background interference the presence of autofluorescent material in biological sample or other components can produce background signals that interfere with the detection of the target analyte 
The fourth limitation is limited dip penetration. In biological tissues, fluorescent signals can be attenuated, limiting the depth from which reliable data can be obtained. This can pose challenges in live cell imaging or tissue studies. The fifth limitation is dependence on environmental conditions. The fluorescence properties of a fluorophore can be affected by factors such as pH, temperature, and ionic strength, necessitating controlled experimental conditions for accurate measurements. Dear viewers, that's all about the fluorescence spectroscopy. Thank you for your support. Thank you.